But I don't get to hear it every morning. So it here's, a sto- here's a story about Simon Baudry. Simon Baudry. What's the story of Simon Baudry? Simon Baudry was a Jew. And he was in the Tsar's uh, army, Navy. The Tsar in Russia, they were tremendously proud of the Navy. The Navy was like the crown glory of Russia, the Navy. They had these huge ships with guns, with everything done in the Navy. And <clears throat> that was one of the reasons for the fall, incidentally, which not to end with the story, but the, the Russian Navy lost the, lost the Japanese Navy. I don't remember which year it is, 18 something or other. They lost to them. And that was a big blow to the, to the uh, how do you say, to the glory of Russia and to the Tsar especially. First step anyway. Anyway, so the Navy, the Navy was some big deal. So <clears throat> this Simon Baudry, <clears throat> he was a Jew, but nobody knew he was a Jew because they, they, they're very anti-Semitic over there in, in Russia. And, uh, and <clears throat> so he, ke- he sort of, he kept it quiet. And he was a regular sailor, but he was an excellent sailor, excellent sailor. So there was one day when the Tsar himself came to visit the uh, naval base. So of course they worked and they shined everything up and they polished the floors and the, the, and the, 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 the masts and the, the sails and whatever they had and the guns and everything was shining and everyone, their uniforms were shining. And uh, the commander, the czar came and everything with the trumpets were blowing and the czar was in his royal carriage and he was this. And um, so they fired the guns and this. And the, the, the commander of the, of the naval base, he said, and now your majesty, I want to sh- we want to show you, demonstrate the bravery, the courage, the ability of the, invinc- and the, and the invincibility, what it is, the invincibility, of the of the Russian Navy, and here we have one of our prize sailors, Simon Baudry, that is going to demonstrate the agility and power and uniqueness of the Russian Navy. And here he goes, and they shout, they, they, the trumpets, do, 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 do. and this fellow Simon Baudry he comes running out top speed, and he, as he's going, he sweeps up his, his backpack. He puts that on his back and he sweeps up his sword and he sweeps up his whatever his gun and he he's, and he's running so he puts it all in the proper place on his back so he's got like uh, you know 100 pounds on the back of his uh on his and his backpack and he runs to the main mast of the ship there's a big ship he runs like up the dock and up to the, the what is it the, the landing plank or whatever it's called and he runs a he, cli- he climbs up this mast just like he's walking. Tremendous speed. Stands up on the top of the mast. The very top of the mast. The thing is like, you know, 10 stories high. Who knows how it is. And he's standing up, balanced on the very tip of this mast. And he yells out for the glory of Russia and for the glory of the Tsar. And he dives off over the deck. But just narrowly missing the deck. And he dives into the water, and the king is just, he stands up, he's amazed. And this Simon Baudry swims underwater and comes up to the king and stands in front of the king and salutes your majesty, all for your glory. And the king said, this is just amazing. Thank you, you just made me so happy. We have soldiers like this, we can never, what is your rank? He said, you know, I'm a, I don't know what that ranks are in, in, uh, in, in the Navy, but I am like a, you know, a, a regular sailor or whatever it is, a, a private or something. He said, I am going to make you, you are now an officer. I am going to make you into a colonel. You are now Colonel Simon Baudry. And he said, I'm sorry, your majesty, but I can't. And he goes like this, he says, what? What? What do you mean you can't? <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the king. Whatever I say is good. He said, but your majesty, it's against the law. I'm a Jew. And a Jew cannot be an officer. The king said, what? You're a Jew? So now the king is a little bit embarrassed, right? So he doesn't know what to do. So he says, yes, I'm sorry, your majesty. You know, I'm a Jew. Maybe I should have said anything. He said, well, then there's no problem whatsoever. Here, you can change your religion. Here, the, 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 
the the uh, the czar and in czarist Russia they were tremendously fanatically religious, and they took the priests with them whenever they go. They are the high priest, whatever it is, and the guy has his you know his hat on. His, so he said, "You'll change your religion. You'll change your religion right here, and I'll make you into a general. You'll be a general on the spot, whatever that I'm, whatever is a general in the navy and an admiral or something. You'll be a general." And this, and we'll give you honors, and we'll give you this, and all you have to do here, come, priest, whatever it is, Thaddeus, come, he's got this water with him and everything. He said, no, 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 the majesty. He said, uh, all of a sudden, you realize what's going on. So he said, your majesty, I really am very grateful for this opportunity. And before I accept it, I would like to do this feat that I just did before to repeat it, to do it again. And the king said, oh, good. So he, again, he runs to the ship and he climbs up on the mast and he yells out on the top, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. I am a Jew, I was born a Jew, I live a Jew, and I will die a Jew. And he jumps off of the mast into the water and it doesn't come up. They're waiting for him to come up on the other side. It doesn't come up. And they're waiting and they're waiting and they're waiting. The king is embarrassed. The czar and the whole crowd, you know, before it took him like, you know, a minute or something to come up. Or two minutes, whatever, how long he could hold his breath. And now they're waiting for two, five minutes, ten minutes. It doesn't come up. And everybody doesn't know what to do. They'll go to the ship. They look over the side. Where could he have gone? Didn't go anywhere. Couldn't have possibly gone anywhere. That was the only ship that was there. They're looking, they're searching under the dock. Now. And they continue the whole thing and that's it. A few days later, this Simon Baudry's body washes up on the shore like, uh, you know, uh, washes up on the shore. And they find it and they take it. Now they don't know what to do. On one hand, he was a traitor to the king. The king told him what to do and he didn't do it. <laughs> on the other hand, right, to, to, to bury them. So they don't want to give him a regular burial. They don't know. So the king said, just leave him out. <clears throat> put him as, put a box, put a guards around the box. We'll decide what to do with him. <clears throat> <clears throat> Maybe they want to stone his body. Who, who knows what they want to do? The king said, leave it, leave him out. Put a couple of guards there around his, his uh, coffin and leave it out. Don't bury it. And we'll decide what to do. So that's what they did. They had a couple of guards standing over there. <clears throat> uh, two Jews, there were other Jews in, in the army. They decided we can't have this. We have to bury him. We have to give him a Jewish burial. So what did they do? They went into the they into the town. Somebody, somebody told them when someone was died and was buried. So that night, wherever they went to the graveyard. And they dug up another body. Maybe somebody died that day or that week, whatever. Anyway, they dug, they dug up a body. And they brought it over to where these guards were. Somehow or other, they got the guards drunk. <clears throat> right? They got the guards drunk. They talked to them, got them drunk, moved them over, and they changed the bodies. They took Simon Baudry's body out, and they put this other body in. And... and they took Simon Baudry that night and they buried him somewhere. And the, 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 good. after the world, the, the, somehow or other, some told on them or whatever, because it was impossible to know after the body was, you know, a few days, all of them looked pretty much the same. So somebody told on them and they got them and they said, tell us where you buried the Simon Baudry. And they refused. They said not. And they killed him. They killed him. One of them they killed. And they burned whatever it was. And the other one, they buried some place. Right? They killed both of them. And they buried them somewhere. Because they refused. And the story is, is that the, nobody knows where Simon Baudry is buried. But we're one of these soldiers that took his body and changed the bodies and gave him a burial. They know where it is. And they say that that place, Jews go there and they, they pray. They pray to God because it was a holy place and that, and their prayers are answered because of the self-sacrifice of this soldier and the self-sacrifice of Simon Baudry. 
And there's, there's other similar stories that happened also with the, 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 the which I'll tell it another time. In the time of the Tzemach Tzedek, our the whole companies of Jews gave their lives rather than to submit to the church. And, and if you think about it, it's pretty astounding because the fact is, is that Russian Orthodox religion is not so idolatrous. It is certainly idolatrous, but it's not so idolatrous as like the Catholic religion or whatever. They, they have much more stress on your own personal service and your service. And, that. and so, you know, a Jew can maybe make an excuse. He can maybe think, you know, eh, eh, eh. And nevertheless, even that, just to deny their Judaism for one moment, and they didn't really know that much about Judaism. All they knew was that they were Jews. <clears throat> and here we have the, the Russian Orthodox, was they were ruling the whole country. They were the rulers. They were the leaders. They were the successful ones. And the Jews were nobodies. What did they have to gain by holding on to their Judaism? And Judaism does not stress going to heaven. It, 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 it talks about it, no doubt about it. But and it says if you're under duress, so you know if a person does a sin under duress, if he changes his religion under under duress, then there was a whole big thing with the Ramba with the Maimonides that there were all these Jews that were forced to become Islam, if to accept them back or not to accept them. But anyways, they were under duress, and so it would have been okay. No, even not to make the slightest concession, with all the excuses in the world, they didn't pay attention to. Them. They don't pay attention. I'm a Jew. I'm going to do what it says in the Torah. That's what a Jew. That's what Rosh Hashanah is. Jewish identity comes out, but in a good way. Have a good day with Mashiach now.